I am present. I am censored. Wally West. You're not an easy man to find. No. That's the point of meditation. Who are you? My name is Rip Hunter. I am trying to save the universe. And I need your help. Hey everybody, it's Charlie. We gotta freak out about this. It finally happened. They brought Wally West onto the Wave Rider. If you're just finding me for the first time, I will be doing videos for all of the Wally Legends episodes, which is basically the rest of the season. So be sure to subscribe to get everything. And there is a flash ring giveaway going on that I'll explain at the end of the video. I was afraid that they weren't going to include him in the episode, but he was listed on IMDb, so I figured they would just tag him at the end. So it got to like the last couple of minutes, then sure enough, excuse me Wally West, I'm here to invite you on an adventure across all of space and time in my TARDIS. So just careful for spoilers from the episode if you haven't seen it yet. Largely it was a Zari episode doing Groundhog's Day with them actually having done an ABBA episode before the events of the episode actually pick up. So when they all roll in at the beginning of the episode before they go into Groundhog's Day mode, they're wearing ABBA costumes. So most of you probably know who that band is. But let's do top 10 WTF Easter eggs and I'll talk about Wally West because obviously next week's episode he'll be around for the entire episode. Number 10, the team rolls in wearing their ABBA costumes. It turns out that Napoleon was the anachronism that they were trying to fix, so they had to pretend to be the band ABBA, so that's why they were referencing that song Waterloo, because that's an ABBA song, but the Battle of Waterloo was where they were taking Napoleon Bonaparte back to. Zari also said Mamma Mia, Here I Go Again, referencing that song. And then the audio glitched out when Heatwave was talking about the song that was stuck in his head, but that was another ABBA song too. Number nine, Zari gets the goo spilled on her and begin Groundhog's Day. So she just goes through a couple of funny montages. Nobody believes her. She finds out about all the crazy stuff that the group is doing. Turns out Nate and Vixen sneak off to do it while they're on missions. That's actually a pretty serious infraction. Ray also says that Nate has a stash of psychedelic drugs lying around somewhere. We learn about Heatwave's donuts. He always has food lying around though. There's never a moment when Heatwave is not either thinking about food or putting food in his mouth. Number eight, it gets even weirder. Heatwave doing laundry, that's weird. So this is mostly just set up for later payoffs, like when she does the love actually thing where she just drops the signs with what they're saying before things blow up again. I was surprised at how long she lingered outside the door when Nate and Vixen started having sex and she activated her totems. Probably one of the funniest parts of the episode was my number seven Heatwave's box, just all the times that Nate had to get killed so that they could open it up to find out about Heatwave's trashy sci-fi romance novel. Then later finding out that Zari actually read it. Oh, it's actually really good. And it turns out that Heatwave, you know, like a lot of authors, wrote himself into the story. So when she says your protagonist needs to embrace his new family, she's just talking about Heatwave embracing the people on the Wave Rider. But I was really happy, number six, that Ray made a reference to that Star Trek episode, Cause and Effect, because the Legends episode almost copy and pasted that entire story. They really just took the framework of it, like the reason for the time loops in the Star Trek episode was something different. That was played more for serious sci-fi. The Legends mostly did it for comedy, because it was all happening inside Zari's head the whole time. Totally not surprised that Ray's a Star Trek fan, and it was fun to watch them shrink down. I forgot that Zari can fly with her air totem, but I think that's mostly because they're saving special effects money because Wally West is coming on and it's a little more expensive to do flash effects, so I am totally fine with them skimping on special effects the last couple of episodes if it means they're going to be throwing a lot of money behind the rest of the episodes this season. Number five, the fun loop, also one of my favorite parts of the episode. She was playing with items that the other people got from previous seasons in the show, going all the way back to Hawkgirl's mask in season one. She wears the Roman gear. She plays with Rory's heat wave gun. Got a little serious though, number four, she actually tries to legit kill herself. It doesn't work, of course. Like, it's not like she's going to leave the show this early in the season. Sarah believes her. They all start working through it. They find Gary stuck in the trash compactor. Hilarious reason for why he wound up in there when we find out what Gideon did. In number three, it wasn't until about midway through her speech pontificating to the group about what they meant to her and how they should all just embrace who they are. Be truthful. Tell everybody what's going on. Tell Sarah about what Constantine told you. So eventually they just kept going on and on. I'm like, okay, wait a minute. This is very clearly going to be played for comedy. The bomb is not going to go off. And sure enough, the bomb didn't go off. But instead of like the funny reaction from the group, like, oh gosh, I just bared my soul to the group and now I have to live with them. Gideon walks out in real life form, which is I think the second time or the third time that she's done it on the show. They don't do it very often. 
but she walks out and explains that it was just a simulation in her head because the computer program that Zari had engineered at the beginning of the episode really did work. But in order for her to be able to change her timeline, she had to stay on the Wave Rider, and she wasn't going to do that if things had proceeded normally. So Gideon, in putting her through this It's a Wonderful Life Groundhog's Day simulation, was just trying to do the thing that Zari programmed her to do. And at the end of the day, the funny thing about Sarah, too, is hardcore as she was through the episode, she tells Zari that she's totally cool messing with the timeline because of a technicality. Like, it's all in the interpretation. Well, your past is my future, and I'm only allowed to not change my past. So that's her saying that she's not going to try and go back and save Earth One Laurel, but she's totally cool changing time to help Zari save her brother. So they'll do that by the end of the season, I'm sure but it will mean them playing it fast and loose with the timeline, which, you know, Doctor Who rules. The Doctor breaks a lot of his own rules the whole time, so it's never meant to be the legends doing exactly what they're supposed to do. The whole idea is that they're a bunch of screw-ups and they make mistakes as they go along, so there will be changes to the timeline. It'll be really interesting to see how that affects the Wally West character because, obviously, Barry changing the timeline was the whole basis for Season 3 in Savitar. So imagine Wally's perspective when he finds them trying to fix the timeline. Like, oh, I could tell you guys all about changing timelines. Sit down, Legends, and I shall tell you the tale of Savitar. Although I have a feeling that at this point, the Legends probably heard about what happened, so they probably kind of know about Savitar, but maybe Wally will tell them some stories. Number one, of course, is Rip Hunter, freshly escaped from the Time Bureau prison to go recruit Wally West, who's in Yunnan province, just meditating on life, the meaning of everything. And while that isn't necessarily an Easter egg for anything, like him being in Yunnan province, there was actually a flash story in Korea where an entire town was going to be blown up by an atomic bomb, and the Wally West version of the Flash saved about a half a million people by running faster than the speed of light, while the rest of the Justice League was trying to prevent a complete catastrophe. And that twist is actually the basis for the Flash episode 15. I've already done a video for that, so I'll just add a link to that at the end of the video. But because Flash actually just ran to China, if you're wondering if it's the same place where Goldberg was, it's actually a different place. But let me know in the comments, what did you guys think of the episode, and what do you want to see them do with the Wally West character, given Flash's ability to time travel, and just the idea that changing the timeline has gone very, very badly for the Flash family in the past. All you have to do to enter that Flash Ring giveaway is just be a subscriber and leave a comment on the video. Congratulations to the winner from my last video this past weekend. Devin Dorr, please private message me so I can get your contact details. I'll name a new winner when I post new Flash this week, which should be in the next day or two. Click here to learn about that Flash family episode with Jay Garrick and Jesse Quick. And click here to learn about the Captain Marvel Easter egg during the Black Panther movie. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.